Hey guys, Guy Level here, and you're watching the ultimate guide to Streamlabs OBS sources. So my goal for this video is to go over all the sources possibilities that you have with Streamlabs OBS. This guide is meant for not only beginners, but also for more advanced users, because what are the chances that you've used every single source in this program? So by the end of the video, you will understand every single source available to you in Streamlabs OBS, and you will also find alternative ways to do things that you already do, maybe better ways of doing them. Okay, quickly before we start, I have a brand new overlay pack called Dream on gumroad.com slash guy level you can head out there and download it right now and with that being said let's check out those streamlabs obs sources so here we are in streamlabs obs as you can see this is my be right back screen but we're gonna start from scratch so i'm gonna go on top of my scenes i'm gonna click on manage all and i'm gonna click create new and here at the name we're gonna call it sources tutorial click OK and click done. And as you can see, nothing is there anymore to add a source. First of all, you need to make sure you are in the editor panel and then you're going to add, you're going to click on that little plus button. OK, and here we have the list of sources. So to the left, we have standard sources and then to the right, we will have widgets, which are two very different things. Standard sources are most likely things that are on your computer, devices, or just files that you will want to display on your stream. Widgets are interactive web-based sources. That means your alerts, your bit boss, etc. So first on the standard list, we have images. So when it comes to images, you should probably do some research on what is accepted inside Streamlabs OBS, but the most common image file formats or PNG, JPEG, bitmap, and all of that. So if I click to add, you can actually double click here, uh, click add source, and then find an image. We're actually gonna use uh, some images from the uh, dream pack here. So starting soon, for example, if you were to add an overlay and that was your starting soon scene, this is how easy it would be to just add the overlay and boom, you're done. Okay, so next on the list, we have a browser source. So browser source is the ability to display things that are web-based in a certain sense. Technically, all widgets are web-based. They all have their own browser source link, but having this option actually helps you get access to so many things. So you can go on Google and find a browser source for whatever widget you want. For example, a website like twitchtimer.com gives you access to this web-based timer that you can configure, and then all you have to do is copy a link so this is the browser source link. Now, if we go back to Streamlabs OBS and we paste that link, it should display the thing that the browser source is from basically. So now we have this timer and it's totally web-based. I can go back on the website and customize it. Keep in mind that Streamlabs actually provides a browser source link for all the widgets. So in case you're not using Streamlabs OBS, you can still have Streamlabs alerts and, and all of the things that are listed in the widgets via their browser source link. Okay, image slideshow, which is something that I don't see people use enough. It's literally what it says. It's an image slideshow. You can pick a bunch of images from your computer and have a little bit of configuration to have them as a slideshow. Now, something I would recommend doing is, for example, if you don't want to use the sponsor banner and you want to display your social media on an intermission screen, this could be a good solution. You have all the options such as the slide mode, so you have automatic, you have manual, so basically you would control it with hotkeys. You have time between the slides, transition speed, if you want to loop it or if you want it to stop when, once it reach uh, the end of the slides. And right here, you click plus to add images after images. You have the choice between adding files one by one or just adding a folder. So as a test, let's choose a folder. Okay, I'm gonna go to the dream thing here. So the panels basically we're gonna use as a slide. Of course, those are panels, you wouldn't use it like that, but just to show you the example. So that would be uh, the about me panel and then it would switch to the rest. So the transition here is a fade. You can actually switch the transition. You can have a cut, a swipe, a slide. Let's check out a slide it would slide in between uh, transitions like that. So if you want to create a cute little panel with your uh, social media, as I said, in an intermission screen, this is great. Okay, let's turn this off. Let's turn that off and let's continue with the list. Okay, uh, display capture. 
is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically showing everything that you can see on a specific monitor, uh, your stream will see it. If there are things that you do not wish to display, do not use this option. Uh, of course, it's gonna create this weird vortex. For example, I am currently using OBS Studio to record this video by using a display capture in order to capture uh, my, my screen in Streamlabs OBS. You can double click the sources to access the properties. Now you do have a little bit of option here. If you have multiple monitors, it will give you all the, the monitors you want to capture. You can't capture, I, I don't know if you can capture multiple monitors at once, but here is where it would appear. You can decide to capture your cursor or not. So that means if I'm moving my mouse, as you can see, it won't appear on stream. Okay, let's cancel that, turn that off. Okay, my eyes. Okay, game capture is the most important one, pretty much if you're playing games, at least. Um, I don't have any games open right now on my computer but here are the options that you have capture any full screen application i strongly recommend not doing that because basically anything that goes full screen is what is going to show instead of your actual game so i'd rather go with capture specific window and if you have a game open and window here you would choose the game so i have a bunch of options but i don't have any games open right now once again a lot of options, but I will let you guys go through it. I know a lot of people have been having problems with black screen capture, game capture pretty much. Uh, all you have to do technically is to update your graphics card driver, it would fix it. But if that doesn't fix it, there's a ton of solution videos on the internet for that, especially on YouTube. So let's cancel that, let's close that. And audio input capture. Now, as a default in your mixer here, you will have desktop audio and mic audio. So. Uh, if you're playing a game or if you're playing YouTube videos, desktop audio will be there. And of course, your default microphone will be captured here. Now, if you have different devices such as mixers and stuff like that, and you want to get audio in, like a second USB microphone or something, what you could do is go here, I'll double click it, uh, add source, and then you would choose which microphone you want. So right now I'm using USB codec, but I could use microphone high def definition device and it will actually appear right there in your mixer. So desktop audio plus mic audio is not the only thing you can have. You can have multiple mics. You can also have multiple desktop audio technically, but that's, that's going to be another source. So I'm going to delete this because I don't have another mic. Color source. Now color source is something that people are sleeping on because it's such a powerful tool. If it's your first time working with Streamlabs OBS, or even if you're an advanced user, you can add little bits to your stream that match your color scheme. I made a video where I created a whole overlay by using color sources, okay? So you can choose the color, but you can also put in the Xcode, right? And if you saw my uh, tips and tricks for Streamlabs users, you can hold Alt to crop stuff. You can hold Shift to drag to stretch stuff. So if I wanted my bottom bar to be this color, that's how easy it is. Now, obviously you're mostly creating rectangles and stuff, but hey, you can also add transparency by adding filters. There's so many possibilities. I really want people to use this option more. Okay, let's go back to the list. Uh, media source. Now, media source is really important because media source is where you're gonna be importing videos. Okay, I have people ask me, how do I import B-roll and stuff like that? Uh, you can have like a meme video play like with a shortcut or something like that. You can also have animated overlay packs, which are most of the time just video files. So we're going to go to media source, double click, add a media source. And um, not only you can add just animated overlays, you know, without sound, stuff like that. Let me find an animated one. And then here, if, if it's an animated overlay, you have the option to loop. So you click loop here and now you have your animated overlay. But depending on the file type, I know it accept, uh, I know what they accept uh, .mp4, .mov, uh, WebM files. So that means that you can have transparency and stuff like that. For example, the labels bar here is a WebM file and this is animated, it glows. Uh, this is from the digital pack, by the way, this is also available at gumroad.com slash get level. <laughs> uh, but there's so, so many options. This one is also animated. So as you can see, this is transparent here. Manage to move the right thing. And of course, if you don't want to accidentally move your sources, you have to, to lock them down like that. So click on the lock uh, near the source in the list, which I'm gonna do with everything. And as I said, you can use that for overlays. You can also use it for just normal videos. If you have like a little meme, three second meme that you want to you want to show with a press of a button, this is a good option. Now keep in mind that if you're adding videos that have sound, 
they will be added uh, to your mixer. You will have a volume mixer for the videos. Uh, you can even play around with the speed if you wanted, which is kind of crazy. Well, this is not a good example. So if you scroll down here, you will see your media source, which is the name of your source is going to have its own volume mixer. This is what I personally use when I'm showing videos uh, for my stream intros. Just download the video and then upload it there. Of course, try to get stuff that you have a license to use or that you own. Watch out for copyright infringement or DMCA takedown. Don't just play a movie or, or play a popular music video, for example. Okay, moving on to text GDI, which is one of the most important sources here. So there's so many, so many options. I'm not gonna go through them. I'm not gonna go through them today, but I, I've made so many videos about them already. So you have the font family. This is where you choose which font you want to use. Even gives you a little preview. Let's use font machine. Uh, you can type anything here and uh, you can also play around with the size. Always trying to make it big if you want a uh, HD look pretty much. And then you can scale it down manually if you want. Um, Another thing that's important, it's read from file. So instead of having uh, to type and update stuff, you can just read them from, from a file, but make sure that you have a file that is updating automatically, basically a text file, a .txt. And of course you can go and add a filter to make it scroll, it's just a scroll filter. I made a video on filters, so watch it and you'll know how to make them scroll, how to change the color, how to do a bunch of stuff. Okay, moving on, window capture. Now, if you have a specific window that you want to show and you want to be able to tab out but still show, um, this is exactly what you need to use pretty much. Let's turn off capture cursor because it doesn't make sense if you're just showing something. Uh, but if you want to, you can you can do it. So here in the window, you're gonna choose which window you want to choose. So here I have the snipping, snipping tool open. Uh, let's try to capture that. Scroll down until we find it. Where is it, where is it, boom snipping tool right there. So uh, some people have some like problems with it. So as you can see, I can be out of the snipping tool, but the snipping tool is still showing on my screen. Uh, I only have one monitor, by the way. So I don't need to be on the screen in order to capture it and still show it. For example, if you're playing YouTube videos on a uh, on a separate window, you can still show that while you're playing the game, for example. Okay, so that's window capture. Let's turn it off and go back to the list. Video capture device. Now this one is where you would find your uh, capture card. Your camera is a video capture device. Like it's literally any device that is made for capturing uh, video. So here in the device, you will pick which one. If you have multiple webcams, uh, they will all show here. If you have an Elgato uh, or any capture card plugged in, this is where you need to add it. And then audio output capture. Now, audio output capture is uh, kind of like the desktop that you have here in the mixer, desktop audio. If you have another source that is also playing music or capturing music, this is where you would find it. For example, I'm on my TV. I will have my TV here. So anything that is playing through my TV from my computer will be captured here, or I can have it on my speakers through my mixer, or I can have any sound that is going to my headset. I don't recommend playing around with this if you don't have a very complicated uh, setup. If you're just using a headset and you want everything on your desktop to be uh, captured, just use desktop audio and boom, you're good. Okay, now we're gonna go quickly through the widgets because uh, those are things that you need to essentially kind of figure out, but I'm gonna kind of explain real quick. Alert box, you know what it is. If you click and add it, it's basically going to be uh, your alerts. Here you can configure it, you can click done, and then you can test widgets at the bottom here. If I click for a follow alert, for example, I'm gonna click. Thank you Jesus. Wow, that's my old default alert. I haven't heard it in so long. Uh, but yeah, that's your alert box. So all of your alerts are going to show in that box. You tr try uh, try to have that in every single scene, for example, because if someone follows, they need to see that you acknowledge it. All right, follower goal, you know what that is. Donation goal, bid goal, those are self-explanatory. Donation ticker. Donation ticker, as you can see, there's a preview. There's a preview here. It's basically going to display uh, your top donators. You can obviously configure it. Uh, chat box, this is where your chat is gonna, going to appear. This is a good thing with Streamlabs OBS. It actually displays a a preview, you know, that would be your bid goal, that would be your donation goal. Obviously, all of that is customizable. The jar, uh, that's the cheer cup, if you will. The events list, you can even display your viewer count if you, if you want to. You have your stream boss, your spin wheel, the credits, which I don't like either because you should host someone at the end of your stream. You should not 
uh, let people get bored and leave. If they see a credit scene, they will most likely leave. It is a cool feature, but I feel like it kind of takes away from the potential of hosting someone with a lot more viewers. Uh, sponsored banner is is something that I made a video on, so check that out. It's basically where you would have your social media pop up. That's what pe most people call it. Media share is some form of donation by sharing media. Basically, people can pay to play videos on your stream. Uh, stream labels, if you're if you don't have a customized thing, this is a good option to use. And then there's instant replay, which I will probably make a video on later because this one is a, a little more complex and I feel like it requires its own video. And that's pretty much it. I think we we've, we went through everything. We went super fast through the widgets, but I think that's it. All right, hopefully this video wasn't too long and painful. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. Let me know if you know about other sources and uh, other techniques and alternative ways to make uh, better sources. I don't know, anything that can improve your scene pretty much. Don't forget to check out the dream overlay pack over at gumroad.com slash get level. It's completely free, so download it. What else? If you haven't started using Streamlabs OBS yet, I will have an affiliate link in the description. It's also completely free, so download and install it from my link. I'm actually getting a little bit of money if you do that from my link, but it's free for you. Let me know in the comments which type of tutorial you would like to see in the future, but like things that require tutorials, not just a simple Google search. And please, please check out my channel because there's a bunch of videos on tips and tricks on Streamlabs OBS. If you're new here, there's so many more videos on Streamlabs OBS and also OBS Studio. So please just click on my name and check out my videos. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. You know all of that, okay? But for now, thank you so, so much for watching my video. I will see you guys next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level out.